You're listening to Allegedly NYC. Allegedly. Hey, okay. Howdy, y'all. Welcome Howdy. to another episode of Allegedly NYC. I'm Nomi Ruiz. <laughs> And I'm Eva San Jurjo. How y'all doing out there? Coming cool to you cats and kids. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I hope everyone's like, taking advantage of bars being open and you can drink on the streets. Isn't it insane? We're like living the best life ever right now. <laughs> People are out really, drinking but... <laughs> in the streets of New York. Yeah. I mean, fuck it, right? What are you going to do? Girl. <laughs> I mean, they, I... Like I was saying before, there's like these big Slurpee cups they're giving out. They're like glow in the dark. They have big straws in them. Yeah, we're in Mardi Gras. And then the one I got yesterday, I was taking a walk. And I walked by this uh, bar. I didn't even know what it was a bar. Either way, either way, it looks like a uh, Pac Sun, Like the Pac Suns. Oh, yes, yes, but with, yes. But with liquor. And it's... I, girl, I got toasty. I walked to Queens. It was crazy. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> what the fuck? I was like, wait. I saw tr- inline trees. I was like, I'm not in Brooklyn anymore. <laughs> You're like, there's more nature here. Wait, it's just different. Can everyone hear us out there? Sound check. It's all good. We're all good to go. Because I got well, some tea are, for y'all. Ooh, oh, right. do you hear that tea, pop? Well, today we have a very special guest coming yes. to us live and direct from Berlin. It's going to be yeah. artist, writer, performer, DJ Juliana Huxtable. She's going to give us... I want I want to know what she's up to. I want to. I want to know how this is affecting... Berlin, the right. art world, yes. her relationship. I want to get all the tea. All of it. All of it. Like, is her art thriving right now? Like, her creativity thriving right now? Or are we in, like, what, where are we? Are the are juices we? flowing? Are the juices flowing? Are the juices, flowing? that's the, yeah. Are the creative juices <laughs> flowing? Okay, well, here's, girl, some tea. Before that, we're going to get into some tea. Girl, I dressed up for the occasion. <laughs> I'm giving you time. I'm giving you all of this. So, Rose McGowan. Our last uh, one, a friend who allegedly rose, yeah, MF McGowan, has yeah. recently accused Bill Mayer of sexual harassment. She said that in the '90s she was on his show, Politically Incorrect, uh-huh. and she says, as the show returned from a commercial break, you leaned over to me and whispered in my ear, "My parents didn't give me a good face, but they did give me a huge cock." Well, you know, shit. You know, I'm a fan of Bill Maher. Like, <laughs> <laughs> this is disturbing for me. It was like, I lost Louis C.K. <laughs> um, I mean, I guess, is that flirting? I don't know. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, it's fucked up. You can't no, speak that that's, shit. That, that's, that's fucked up. Wrong. That's super but it, wrong. It reminds it's me of... the point thing. It reminds me of... Remember when, when I hooked up with that guy in your apartment? <laughs> And he, he was What's so fun? beautiful. <laughs> I mean, he's, he was oh, gorgeous. That kid that we picked up? And I was just like, yeah, you're, you have such a beautiful face. And then, like, when I like took his pants off, he was like, does my dick match the face? <laughs> I always liked him. You I know, like... I saw pictures of him on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> I was All right, for pictures we of wanted to post that one. Oh my God, hilarious. That was a crazy night we had. That was a crazy night. That was. Insanity. Like, I cannot. That was a fun, crazy night. I missed our crazy nights. That's what I miss about us. Yeah, we ended up here doing something really crazy. Cats, wolves, <laughs> shit. Girl, lots of shit. Ooh. Oysters. Girl, the tea oh. is sizzling hot. Bring it, girl. Oh, hold on. Where is this tea? Ty- this is a Tyra Banks tea, girl. Oh, this is... I heard about this tea, and I have a lot to say. Okay. Go on. So, clips from America's Next Top Model are beginning to resurface on the internet. And they're actually... Like, in- from years ago. Girl. Go on. And also from her talk show, which was fucking psycho, now that I look back at it. Yo, that sh- talk show was... Sh- it was no Ricky Lake, I'll tell you that. Girl, it was like... I saw I saw one clip of her talking it's to embarrassing. to some girl and she's like she's like he, she put pictures of three guys and she's like which one do you think is more attractive and she's like um I think number one is my type and she's like okay number one is a serial killer 
who's murdered 25 girls in the past. <laughs> I'm like, what's the point of this? What is the point of this? Like, honestly, cause even before and like now this is, has resurfaced. Like, her talk show was really cringeworthy. Like, I saw some, I was like, I felt uncomfortable watching it. It was very I was uncomfortable. Like, I was like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> Girl. Well, uh, another video has resurfaced from America's Next Top Model. And in the uh-huh. clip, she's telling a model named Danny Evans. Uh, well, I guess in this episode, all the models were sent to the dentist. Like a group oh, trip. I, mean, I actually remember that episode. Go on. So they all went to the dentist to get their teeth checked. And the girl, Danielle... They asked her what she wanted to do, and she said she just wanted a cleansing and a whitening. And so when she went in front of the judges panel at the end of the episode, uh, she, Tyra began to read her, and she was like, so Danielle, you went to the dentist, but refused to have the your gap closed, because she had... How these. do you even close that? Like, how do you close... Like, you don't she, isn't that a new set of teeth or some shit? That's not like a day's work, I don't feel... It sounds like a quick, quick fix. I don't know. Maybe they just extend your teeth. I don't know. I have no idea. I have no idea. That sounds like a denture. That Go sounds on. like they remove. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, yeah. So she then she kept going and she was like pointed. She was like, "Do you really think you can have a CoverGirl contract with a gap in your mouth? This is all." Oh, ask Twinkie. Hello. Ask everybody else. Lauren Hutton. Like, sorry, Lauren Hutton. She's famous for a fucking gap. Go on. She was like, "This is all people are gonna see. Easy, easy, beautiful color girl." It's not marketable. Meanwhile. And then the, uh, uh, what's the, the one that does voguing and teaches runway? What's his name? Uh, Miss J. Miss J kept going and was like, um, well, speaking of gap, there's going to be a gap in, in the competition because it's going to chop you if you don't fix it. God so they basically bitch. bullied her into fixing her gap. She then got it. She agreed. She's like, I'll do it only a little bit. I'll do it compromise mm-hmm. halfway. All right. She wound up winning the the that the competition that, yeah. that season, and now people are starting to like attack Tyra on Twitter. I mean, honestly, like the snowflakes need to calm down. This was like how many years ago, <laughs> and, and honestly, like at the time, maybe like you know, fashion is always fucking bullshit as far as like what they consider. Uh, pretty at the and, and and edgy at the moment because obviously right now th- all I see in the runways is gap and like you know uh you know uh unique beauty um right. so I don't understand I don't under like even at the time we already had edgy bitches so I don't understand why she would have done that you know um I mean for Christ we, Madonna gorgeous you know like she has her gap like everybody like i don't understand they would they wouldn't have heightened that you know yeah and maybe change the beauty at the but you know get then again what was it 2005 this fucking thing uh aired and now we're like we're so bored that we're backtracking and shaming people from like over 10 years ago are you fucking well because now me? we have like twitter and so the videos come on twitter you know people start making memes and it's like all the stuff is coming regurg- being regurgitated yeah, the millennials or whoever maybe not the millennials who's who's the other generation that we're like giving side eye to now anyway now they're seeing it for the first time and now they're gagging and they're we're like bitch we well, I, I mean, I think I agree with the people that are like hating on it because I think that's shady. Like, <clears throat> first it is of all, shady, but it's ten years of, to go shade. Yeah, but she, I think she, she came out and she apologized for the insensitivity. She says you were right, blah 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 blah. blah. But like, okay, d- but like, why does she pick on one some girls for that? But then the other girls, like Winnie, who has like vitiligo, she like pushes all these other girls for their individuality. But then this right. one girl, she was like attacked her for some reason, and it's. I remember, I believe one season she actually added a gap to somebody's tooth. No, she did not. I'm, pr- I don't, I'm pretty certain there was one season she gave this girl, she had this girl, because they you know they do this tooth thing every, they did this the, the teeth thing every season. And there was one girl they added a gap, if I'm not mistaken. And she <laughs> no, was I don't believe you. <laughs> I love the bitch. I love the bitch. You remember that one season? <laughs> this girl was crying hysterically. She did not want to cut her hair. They were so, so mean. I mean, she had the long, she had the whole long hair. So Tyra made her cut her hair. This girl is legit, like proper hysterical crying. <laughs> what happens later that she got eliminated that day? 
<laughs> they're like, you know what? That haircut really didn't work actually, out for it was, you. It actually didn't work out for you. Actually, he's, he's a lace front. Oh. Girl. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> Tyra was insane. Like, crazy. I mean, there's some... I mean, I, I don't know if I'm not sure which is worse. It's, some of the top model like clips or the the talk show I think is worse. <laughs> the talk show is ridiculous when she brought out Naomi Campbell, but she's like, we have no studio audience today because this is just you and I. And I saw someone that like, oh, remember when Tyra was so shady, she didn't want Naomi Campbell to get applause. So she <laughs> deleted the audience. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Girl, oh and meanwhile, God. I mean, Naomi, you can't fuck with Naomi even now. I can't. She's everything. She is everything. She's keep, she's um, keeping it real and keeping it tight with her YouTube yep. channel. I'm living. Yeah, she looks fabulous. Oh, we got some more tea in today. Are you ready? How I've been waiting all weekends. Well, let's remind our guests that today we're going to have Juliana Huxtable on. She'll be on in about 15 minutes. <laughs> Joining us live from Berlin, artist, okay. writer, performer, DJ. DJ. DJ, but before that, we have much more tea. Keep on giving it to me, girl. Okay, so here we go. A woman named Selena Powell, who is famous for spilling tea on rappers that she's had sex with. Go on. What did she do? So, well, one time, let me just go through her resume. One time she accused Offset of impregnating her. She said she was pregnant with Offset's child. Everyone knows Offset is... Cardi B's baby daddy. Man, baby daddy. Well, they're married, no? Are they married? Cardi B? Go on. Oh, yeah, they had a wedding. They got, they're married. Yeah, Cardi B's they're husband. Married. Baby yeah. Daddy. So, Go on. allegedly, that was one of her claims to fame. And now she's claiming to have had an affair with Snoop Dogg. Who's married. Who's Yikes. married. She's saying he flew her out and they had an affair, and he, which he denied, and his... His uh, wife supported him in his in his statement, but now she's saying that she has proof. Honestly, but like in all honesty, if you're gonna have it for get the girl a plane ticket. That's how why I'm getting it from this. <laughs> get her a plane ticket. Well, I guess you're gonna do this. Allegedly, he flew her out. Well, I mean, does she have a if she has a the, the ticket receipt? Because you're going to need, like, a little... Well, no. She didn't put that in her scrapbook. What she has is a tape, a videotape. Oh, we're not going to see Snoop Dogg's dick, are we? Ugh. Well, anyway, she has a sex tape, allegedly, of her with Snoop Dogg. No. And she also has a sex tape, she said, with Takashi69. Oh, and that bitch... That bitch is too much for me. He just came out of jail. I think they should have put him right back in. I can't with him. (laughs) Well, he he got out of jail because of the coronavirus. Girl, meanwhile, that worked out for him. How many people that should already be out that he? I, I, I think he should. She, he should. He's young. He could. He could have stayed. <laughs> oh, the gosh, he poor they gotta, If they don't shoot his ass, I don't know. He better have people some protection because he's a rat. He better keep it really tight because I would not. If I were like, if I were hired, I was hired. If I was hired as security for him, I would. Not, I would not risk my life for that little twat. I wouldn't. <laughs> well, this okay. Just so she it. allegedly has a sex tape of her with Snoop Dogg. And Takashi six nine, and she's charging twenty nine ninety nine to people that want to watch it on a private Girl, Instagram account. Half seas, half seas. <laughs> Girl, Venmo me fifteen dollars. I want to see you fucking Snoop Dogg's dick, but I guess I want to see what the performance is like. I, is he stoned? Of course he's stoned. Is he he's doing? Stoned. Is he doing a little shoddy with her pussy? Girl, I'm, who knows. I don't. Oh think, my god! I don't think I could watch that shit. I mean, I'm done to split it with you if you wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> I'll split it with you, and then you watch it, and you let me know what's going I'll on. I'll let you know, and, and, and we have to be. I'm like, girl, you, you know what? You're gonna have to see it. Yeah, like, I'm sure, I feel like I feel like you want to see what's his name Takashi's sex tape. I feel like you, you would be interesting. I would be down. I feel like he can hit it. I feel like he's like, I feel like he gets down. I feel like he throws down. He's a kid, though, right? How many times have he's thrown down? He's, he's like, he's mad young, no? Well, allegedly he's he like abuses early... women and he's like gross. So I don't know. But I mean, I'm just going based by on looks. And if I take away the rainbow hair and the rainbow teeth, uh-huh. maybe there's a cute, maybe there's a look back there. He must have had his own cell in, in jail because I would have, uh, he's very pretty. 
And he has, like, so much money. They probably have to protect his ass hardcore. I wonder. Or I wonder if he dropped the soap, honey. Mm. I would have dropped several soaps. (laughs) 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 All right, here's some more tea, honey. Mm. So, allegedly. Allegedly. Kim and Kanye are having a very rough time living together in quarantine. You and everybody else is out there. <laughs> but at least they have a wing. I'm in a railroad. <laughs> well, imagine. Allegedly, they're at each other's throats. Like, fully at each other's throats. So, Kim, allegedly, Kim is getting stir crazy. She's used to being on the go. And she's just spending a lot of time alone with her and the kids because he's not doing. I mean, they have a lot of kids. He's and he's not pulling his weight allegedly. Like he's just letting her handle it all, and that's not cool. I didn't do this shit by myself, girl. I've heard a lot of that. Remember, we were talking about like that woman in Asia. And, and, yeah, she divorces us as soon as they open the gates up. She's like, boop, girl. peace. You know, she's what like, I love- I'm doing this all alone. Like this is supposed to be like a fucking teamwork shit. Yeah. Then why have four kids? Like have four kids, four kids under ten. That's a lot. I don't. I doubt she's doing it by herself. I'd, I'd be really surprised. Well, now but of course way, they, 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 I don't know if they have nannies and stuff like that now that were are working. I, I would go to quarantine with a nanny, but I, <laughs> I would have quarantined with a nanny before my I would quarantine with my husband. Oh, Oh, one hundred percent. That she, she like literally that person would probably be more to me than my husband. Girl, <laughs> if he's not going to pull the weight. Girl, well, allegedly they're staying at opposite ends of the house to keep things civil. That's awesome. Like, I mean, so they one, have a huge-ass house. How do you get, like, annoyed with someone in a huge-ass, like... It's like a complex. Like, Yeah. Well, I guess I it's because of the kids. The when, when, if you're not pulling <laughs> your weight with the kids, that can affect. Oh, of course. Like, kids sense shit. You know what I mean? They're little... They're little... Little sponges of, of, of life. Because I remember when I was a kid, I remember even as young as I was when my parents separated, I totally remember when shit went left. I totally remember that shit. So, um, kids sense it, especially if you're in the West Wing. If I'm sleeping in the wine cellar, <laughs> that's what I chose. <laughs> you're like... Because that was my choice. That was my choice. <laughs> <laughs> so I've converted the wine cellar into... <laughs> I put a day bed office. in the wine cellar, I'm... yeah. <laughs> if you need me, I'll be... Well, you know what? Couples are going through some shit right now, so at any cost, I mean, it's it is it's going to get a little crispy. It's going to get crispy, you know? I wanna... This is, like, the most time you're going to be with this person that you, you know, that you like slash love. It's, you know, it's going to be... Like, I, I know a lot of friend couples, you know, that there are great days. There are days I like you. I'm going to... Um, Get a mask, <laughs> and I'm gonna take a walk. So I don't like. That's true. I want to get Juliana's very headed pillow. Oh. I, I think Juliana's quarantined with her boo. So I want to get. I want to have that conversation. Yeah. With all three of us, because we have we're having different, very different experiences. Like you're oh, also totally, quarantined yeah. with your boo. I'm quarantined with my boo. I'm on like yep. a, a visitation you're, schedule. You're, you're you're potting. You're actually potting. I'm Is potting. I'm co-parenting you're the. Potting. I'm co-parenting the peen. We're co-parenting yes. the peen. Yes. Dick, dick on wheels. Yeah. Dick with wheels. Co-parenting wheels. the dick. That's what's happening with me. I think. Yeah. This is. Yeah. I think so, it's working for me. No, it's totally working. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I, it's everyone's. It's it's it's. It's all all sorts of new, honey. It's all sorts of new. All sorts of Cause new. Because, you know, this is, you know, work life is like, you know, most of my time is at work. So this is the most time you're going to see this person. Because eight hours of the day, you're pieced out, you know, more than eight hours. So this is. I this would is, die. I would it's die. Different. You know, because like. Totally different. I've lived with boyfriends before, but at least we had our work. We had time apart. We yeah. had our own space. Yeah. This, there's no break. I there's no break. Don't know how that would work for me, but yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that more later. I mean, you like each other enough, yeah. Well, Go on. Good. Well, I think you know that's what I want to talk about. Like uh, things people are putting into practice, and like you know techniques that people can use to sort of like keep your relationship alive and healthy during this crazy time. Because even for me, that's not quarantined with my boo. We've had to like have discussions about how to keep our relationship healthy 
during this insane sort of shift in the world like it it definitely affects relationships regardless of whether or not you're living together and so we've had to like make some adjustments to make sure we we stay healthy and and passionate and all that good stuff yes especially passionate yeah yeah you know we don't want to get overwhelmed well there's another teapot here darling definitely still shower last thought girl showering (laughs) that's on the list i think you should tell yourself that (laughs) Well, brushing the teeth, I forget. I don't know why. Because I keep on drinking wine. And like I was like, oh, I don't want minty wine. And so I keep on forgetting to brush my teeth. How do you drink but wine I, without brushing your teeth? I can't, girl. I don't like minty wine. <laughs> yeah, but are you brushing your, are you drinking wine right when you wake up? No. Not until noon. I'm a lady. <laughs> no. <laughs> like you brush your teeth when you wake up. And then like. Yeah, you know, because I have coffee first in the morning. So I brush after my coffee. Okay, you know what? Too much information. I might get judged. Your freedom to write me. Yeah. <laughs> Leave your judgments in the comments and we'll be reading them. Also, if you have any questions for us or for Juliana Huxtable, leave them in the comments. I'm monitoring the comments on my Facebook page and also on the Allegedly NYC's YouTube page. So if you have any questions or comments, put them there and we can go back and forth. So here's another tea, girl. The final tea of the day. Ooh, I hate when they finish. <laughs> A nurse in Staten Island. Oh, here we go. Stole a credit Which... card from a former COVID nineteen patient while he was hospitalized, in order to pay for gasoline and groceries. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's fuck. You don't do. This is not the time to be shady. Like you're gonna get caught one, regardless. Two, like girl, you got a job. You don't need to be doing this. You have a job, and you were doing it. Now you now you're like a convict. With a heart of gold. Girl, yeah. <laughs> well, she's been charged with grand larceny, petty larceny, right. and criminal possession Ooh. of stolen property Shit. after ringing up charges on two of her clients' credit cards. Oh, girl. That's not the look. That is not the look. Listen, you're you're already doing good. Why did you backtrack? You're you're already doing good. Girl. Like you're giving to the world. You're doing you're doing good shit. Why did you just ruin their all? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god this ruins your like whole shit like what the fuck i honestly uh that's really disappointing to hear because you know uh i know you know not nurses but i hear like you know sometimes you hear about like home attendants and people like taking shit you know you know you, you, you yeah, don't, know. don't 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 do that don't do a that. lot of those nurses are shady like they they like especially at nursing homes like there's a lot of like abuse it's, it's weird like why do you have that job if you then want to like attack and abuse your client yeah and especially when they're so vulnerable there's you know such a vulnerable that is some psychopath shit to be honest with you sociopath shit because you want you know you help them you nurse them and then you're gonna like like you know take advantage of them you know yeah. not cool no it's not not nice well not nice the way all. the way they found out was after he died um his family member received died. a credit card statement yeah he died <laughs> he died <laughs> So she and the credit. So now you can't even press charges, girl. And the credit card statement though was still alive, and she received it. And she's like, you know, my father always paid in cash for these statements. So you know, he they they saw the gas charges and the grocery charges, and and they have footage of her at Shoprite using the card. Oh, girl. The jig is up. Yeah, and and so the- I mean, you can't even go in. You're only gonna yeah, exactly. You're only gonna get food and gas at this point. You not you can't go to Marshalls or TJ Maxx to get shit. Everything's fucking closed. Where are you going, girl? Weird, like weird. I God, guess they don't pay her just, that much. It's just not the time. What's that? I I mean I I wonder if she just was not paid enough. Probably not. Right. But, no one's paid I mean, enough. No, 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 nothing justifies robbing a dying no, man. No, seek 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 help or ask yeah. for you know like I seek as much help as you can. Do not steal now. Well, you know what? This is a this is a shit that you know New York City. You know, because shit is so crazy. I hope the crime rate doesn't go crazy like you know like it did when we were kids. You know, like right. I hope that because yeah. uh, you know people get desperate around this time. Right. And I think at the moment it, the crime it, rate is down, but it is, yeah. I wonder how that's gonna go in September. Like if with this, well, because everyone has unemployment right now, so it's cute. So once the unemployment's gone, 
Well, people I are still trying what... to get it, though. They're not, not exactly. everyone's getting so it. So I just hope, I know, I just hope, uh, you know, during this time, people get a little desperate. And I hope it doesn't get it, you know, it doesn't uh, get worse. I hope it doesn't uh, get dark and weird. And we, we we're, it's fucking like uh, darker, mad, mad, you know. darker and weirder yeah. than it already or is darker, now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, so I, I don't steal. Girl. Stupid. Any any questions in the comments? Any, any comment? Oh, I see Benjamin says that his wife. Him and his wife have a safe word for when they're feeling overwhelmed so the other can back down. Oh, I love this. I love it. Can That's a, bringing this safe word to the table. <laughs> bringing this safe I word like to this. the table. That's yeah. good. What's your safe word, Benjamin? What would your safe word yeah, be for that, Ava? Word? Uh, leave. <laughs> 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 or how about time right like <laughs> time what is the mask <laughs> this will be my safe word yeah like... <laughs> serious but you know I like that Benjamin that was that was cool <laughs> yeah that gave me that's good Ben Oh no, he says in Mexico City, some of the the crime is actually skyrocketing. Yeah, I heard I hear that a lot of um, a lot of women are being like, like that are in abusive relationships are actually like like a thousand women were like killed or something in Mexico City because girl, I don't know, it's just oh. getting really wild uh, right now. You, you are not going anywhere. Just stay. Let's just stay put, guys. <laughs> just stay put. I'll just stay here. put. Um, I, I, I just hope that, uh, I hope this ends soon. I know I, you know, it's just, it's just frightening because I don't, we don't know anything. We're not, we can't rely on anybody's information right now. Right. And people are not even that civilized. So like when things are going to start reopening, then I feel like people are just going to run amok and not, not follow the rules and just like, it's going to be a little... Yeah, strange time. I, it is, it is, because I mean, there's people where you and I live. They're still walking around like it's fucking Disneyland. Nothing's happens. Oh, girl. Hi. <gasps> oh my god. Hello. Hello. Hi. Juliana is here with us. Hi, gorgeous. Look at you. You look. You hear me? Is, is the sound is the sound working? Oh yeah, it's good. Working. I hear you. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Good. Okay. Cool. How are you? Hold on, let me get I'm you. I'm good. Dead center. You look amazeballs. Beautiful. Oh, thank you. Let me not, every you. Could, not everyone could pull off a purple lip, but you're succeeding, darling. <laughs> oh, my God. We were I've just been struggling for years. <laughs> <laughs> we were actually talking Love about your, thank you. your makeup line with, with Mac, the one when we all hung out at that party. Oh, the, yeah, the promo. The promo. Um, yeah. Oh my, the shock value. Shock that, value. I actually cool. wore that the other day. So good. I use the blue on my lower yeah. lashes sometimes. The blue mascara. Okay. I love a blue mascara. Girl, so how you doing? How's things in Berlin? It's cute. I mean, it's it's. I mean, it's very quarantine. I feel like okay. we're all kind of to a certain degree in similar situations, but. It's things are starting to open back up here in Berlin. That's cute. and the weather is like half the time it's giving spring. So like Saturday it was totally sunny, cute, warm, no jacket. You know, some stores are opening, but you still can't really like there's no bars, theaters, gyms, kind of, yeah. you know, Thank movie you. theaters. Yeah. None of that right. is, is opening up. We were just talking about in New York, they have like to go, the bars are open like to go and they're like, there's a whole <laughs> block where I'm living where it's like four bars are open. People are all hanging out outside with these big slurpy Drinking. cups. And I'm like, what is going on wrong. here? I was like, is that, yeah, is that going on in Berlin? The to go cocktail. It's the era of the to go cocktail. <laughs> is, I that, feel like. is the same in Berlin? I've been waiting. I, I kind of fucks with, I kind of fucks with the, 
I miss the cocktail cup to go. Oh, I know all about it. It's my new life. (laughs) And now we can drink (laughs) in the street. (laughs) Well, Juliana, you're from Texas, right? I am. I'm from Bryan slash College Station, Texas. And when did you, because we know each other, obviously, from New York City. Mm -hmm. So when did you relocate to New York? So I, well, I went to school at Bard, so north of the city, but, and I picked it because I knew I couldn't go to school in New York because if I did, I felt like I would end up just like, who knows where I would end up, like 18 year old me, like spiraling (laughs) straight from like, you know what I mean? Like country town to the city. I I had the intuition to be like, okay, I want to be near New York, but I don't want to give all of that right off the bat because I would just wild out too hard, yes. which I still did. But I'm glad I did that at like 20. You're like after college. One, 22, <laughs> you know. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. And so I, I, I moved to New York like officially in 2010, like summer of 2010. But I had been going, I started going out in New York. Right. From 2006 is when I first started, I it, I was right off the bat, like, nice. where's the fake ID? I need to be at the function. <laughs> like, exactly. Take me, take me there fast. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she was up in it. And now you're in Berlin. I am. I'm in Berlin When now. did you, I remember, because I know you traveled, you traveled, well, you, you were traveling a lot before this mm-hmm. all went down. Uh, what made you choose Berlin as your new home base? Well, I kind of, it had been like a few years, like you said, of me basically traveling everywhere. And New York was like my home base. And I still like I still have my, you know, I haven't even subletted my room in New York. Like it's 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 sort of my okay. like now all my friends from out of town, when they're in town, they stay in my room. It's kinda cute. It's turned into like, you that's know. Nice. Well, that's um, cute. But I was just traveling a lot and I think New York is generally like my, that's my like first love, you know? And it's like, there's no other place that's like New York. And so if I, I enjoy traveling, but I never really went anywhere else that I was like, oh, I really want to live here. I thought places were interesting, you know, maybe I could be here for a month or two, but yeah. And so I remember I quit my job when I quit my day job. So many people had been telling me this was in like 2013 that I quit my my job so many people have been like you need to go to berlin you need to go to berlin and so i just cashed in all my vacation days and went for six nice. weeks and i was, was ab- i was like obsessed yeah. and i didn't want to live there i didn't want to live there then um but i just after touring so much i just ended up here a lot because it's it's like all of most of my gigs are in europe for music and art and stuff and so i just ended up in berlin more and more and more and it's one of those things where I would, like, everyone in New York, for a while, everyone in New York thought I lived in Berlin, and everyone in Berlin thought I lived in New York, so it was always a, like, surprise when I was there, which was cute. Totally. And I, did, I was such a, like, New York person, I, like, couldn't say I wasn't living in New York. I was just like, no, 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 no. <laughs> You're like, I'm not taking this off my I'm credit. I'm just here. I'm here for a period of time, you know, but... Um, <laughs> I decided, I just decided I was going to stay for a winter. I was like, I'm going to live in Berlin for the winter. And it's like, well, if I fuck with it during the winter, then I really fuck with it. Yeah, for you know? sure, because it's right. tougher there that's in the a, winter. That's a true test. Yeah, true test. yeah. And I just kind of arbitrarily made that decision. And I had been, like, I did that with L.A. I went to L.A. for a little bit, chopped to L.A., not a place, not the place <laughs> for me to like, go off. If you're happy there, I'm happy for you, but it's not for me. <laughs> like, good um, for you. Yeah. And then I also, I, I like fell in love here. And so that made it easier to also. Oh, they fell in love. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yes. And I have a lot of friends here. So it's, 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 it's been like, I just kind of wanted to try something new and I had never, I hadn't, I had never lived outside of New York. So. Yeah. I think that's important, especially for yeah. artists to have like a different living experience in the different parts of the world. You get into different cultures, you get into different tea. You meet, you meet like, I mean, so much shit happens when you like, it's different to travel and just like touch your floor on the, on the, on the ground for like two days. And then like, or as opposed to living there and like meeting locals mm-hmm. and being a part of the community, it's totally different. Mm-hmm. I so, love that. How would you describe your the work that you do? Like, you know, people we were saying you're like an artist, performer, DJ, writer. Yeah. How would you sum up your 
Um, I mean, generally, I feel like I'm whatever I'm doing, I'm doing me. Yeah. <laughs> and I guess artist is probably the easiest thing because it kind of yeah. encompasses all of it. It's like if totally. I start making a list, I think it gets a bit more like complicated. But like, you know, I do writing, I do poetry, I do visual art, performance art, music. And so yeah. I, I think artist is probably the easiest thing. Yeah. Um, sums every sums everything up. With some with with some little side dishes. Also. Right. <laughs> like slash slash slash. <laughs> I love, I mean I'm such a fan of your poetry. I bought your book uh what pineal gland what is that what's the title of the mucus, mucus and my pineal gland oh my god so good i love it all caps like everything all day every day so how <laughs> is this how is this whole pandemic affecting your work now has it has there been a shift in the way you work and like what you're working on in the industry that you're in well it's it's like there's so many like so many variables have are converging at the same time because I mean this year so my plan this year was to focus on music like I was like you know I've done a lot of I did I've done a few solo shows of visual art and I really was and so I so I DJ and that's one aspect of it but then I also have uh, like a band that I travel with and we have a kind of like live show that we do together and Ooh. it's sort of evolved from performance art and so it's all about the live show and we're like i we like love each other so much and it's like that is like it's it's a total its own world but i knew nothing about recording music i don't know like like being in a music studio like i i, I can produce music and i started doing that but the idea of translating the li what we do live to a mm -hmm. studio setting was sort of and so that's kind of what I plan to do this year and we had this residency in London and then everything obviously you know obviously with corona yeah. everything suddenly changed and I think for me I'm so used to traveling all the time like I had a, I had a show last summer so I, went, I was back in New York for like two months that was you know so then I was in Penn, then we'll do a tour and then I was in you know, Mar like spring last year, I was in East Asia, you know, oh, wow. and so I'm so used to this constant movement as a part of, it's kind of a part of how my practice is like, it's sort of like an essential part of that. And then, you know, I will, I set, I will settle somewhere to make work. Usually I go back to New York because it still is kind of for me, it has been the, the place where I creatively, you know, my studio is there, that's where my friends are, that's where, and so I, mm -hmm. And so it's been interesting this whole period because it's like, you know, now I'm, I'm not with my bandmates because we were going to be together in May. So now that's Shit. not happening. And so it's like this thing where I'm just in. And I also, before London, I was going to go to Beirut with my boyfriend. Oh, oh my shit. God, everything so, got chopped, honey. I was, oh, I, everything shit. got chopped. Shit. And so, and I had also agreed to move out of my apartment in Berlin. So I basically oh. like everything is canceled and I have I have don't have anything, you know, any big things for visual art because this year was about music. Music was the first thing to be chopped. Yeah. You fully, know, like fully sort of from the front of stuff. <laughs> and yeah. I was like, I had no apartment. So the beginning I was totally bugging out. Shit. I was having like Shit. I was having like a miniature crisis at the yeah. beginning, um, you know, and I was trying to find places to live and. But it's sort of evolved. It's gone through like phases. Mm -hmm. It's been interesting. Like I've I've come to now. I sort of like it because it's like I mean, when else will we get to experience something like this know, historically? Yeah. It's such a exactly. crazy thing to be able to experience. Like the suspension of like labor and work is kind of in some ways. I I I fuck with it because I yeah. think it's cool. Mm -hmm. And so. I've kind of been in these waves where it's like there was a period where I got really into reading and uh, writing just like obsessively like, you know, and I started writing a book and I was writing all this poetry and, you know, then that kind of stopped. Then I just did nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. Then I didn't do a damn thing and was just like. It's I hard to be, like, you would think, like, artists, everyone's like, oh, my God, you must be so inspired. You're writing and doing all this stuff all day. Yeah, I'm like, I'm, I'm actually not inspired I at no, all. I just feel like I'm 
Yeah, it's some it's some like weird a coma thing that you kind of have all of a sudden. It's like the energy all of a sudden it started, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh my god, I can't move, I can't move, I can't. Do Literally, shit. Like, yeah, like yeah, because you're not inputting st- as much as you used exactly. to. It's just right. Like- there's not there's just not as much, and I'm the type of person I'm already kind of like I like being an artist because I. I go with what I feel. Like generally, I'm not like I go with what I feel. I go with my intuition, and so it's sort of been. And I'm coming back into a pro, like I'm coming back into productivity, but I'm not quite fully there yet. Yeah. If I'm honest, I do a lot of writing. I do a lot of writing, That's good. and then That's working major. out. Right. Girl. That's like I can't. Yeah. I've turned into a crazy like. I so I've had I have an aversion to gyms generally speaking, uh-huh. and you know like generally it's like oh I like to do yoga and I have like I'm a home workout person. Same. Yeah. You know I love infomercials. I love like Beachbody.com. I'm like yes. that girl. And you know, but it's generally just like oh I want to get kind I want to get fit. You know, like I'll work right. out. But now that I have the time, I've become like I'm like ooh like how can I like get a bigger butt you know what i'm saying right it's just like, you like focus on hair. I'm, like, I'm not that girl like go off to the people that are like that's what they're doing but <laughs> it's been really fun actually and i think after this is done i might be a gym person oh <laughs> yes for that <laughs> all oh right God. that's yeah. a good that's a good thing to add on the list <laughs> yeah <laughs> we were and talking then, to amanda and she's she does the carmen electra workout stripper workout <laughs> on youtube yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was like yes well we all we hear we, we've been talking a lot about how like pandemics uh really expose underlying issues in society like everything's sort of like coming to the surface right now and I saw mm-hmm. you, you were a part of this uh, Free the People campaign that aimed to slow the spread of COVID in New York City prisons because it's like there's mm-hmm. all this high density there. Um, and that was to help raise money, bail money for prisoners that couldn't mm-hmm. afford it. Um, and, you know, that was obviously an underlying issue that has been there forever. Oh, he's been talking about how there's just overcrowded right. prisons and that whole system right. is, is... Yeah, before everything, really. Yeah. Like, do you think this is going to have an effect on, like, these social economic issues, like, moving forward? Like, if we can use this moment to, like, sort of make a shift? I I think, I, I think no matter what happens, there will be, I feel like there will be such radical changes just because... I mean, it's it's just impossible that it wouldn't be, yeah. you know, to, to even if it's not the way that we think it is, like, and like, you know, I, I think early on, there's throughout the process, there's been a lot of speculation. And so some people are like, this is the end of the stage of, of like, the late stage of capitalism that we're in, it's all imploding. And it's like, yeah, maybe question mark, I don't know if that's necessarily T, but I feel like there will be radical shifts, because it's, it's, I think it will be difficult for a lot of people to go from not having to have such a frantic, hectic relationship to labor and then going back into that, whatever happens after, even in the sense that I think a lot of people will be pushed to more, you know, marginal, more marginal positions, you know? And so I, I, I don't know, I don't know what it will look like, but I already kind of feel that for myself. Like I've no, I haven't been for years like since I first quit my job and was just like you know selling molly you know and nightclubs and doing dominatrix work like I haven't really been just I have no money there's just no you know I have these like luck I'm applying for art grants I've gotten you know I got um whatever I got my stimulus check they're saying I'm gonna be on some unemployment thing but it's 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 an interesting time but I'm I'm just rolling with it for now yeah. But it's also, yeah. I think what scares me is like, like, like a, I think about my family a lot of times and it makes me really nervous. You know, and I, like my sister's a chef, you know, she went to CIA, she was working at oh, these Michelin too. star restaurants, but mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's kind of like the music industry or something. It's totally precarious. You can be working at the most bougie restaurant. You know what I'm saying? Like people are writing about in the New York Times, Michelin star, weird Europeans are showing up. They're obsessed. They're taking photos and you have no money. And now she's like, she thinks she's going to have, she might have to like, you know, just work for Amazon or something. And so in a lot of ways, I'm like, oh, this could get really dark in the sense that a lot of people are pushed to even more precarious gig economy. Oh my God, it's so Um, true. 
I literally signed up to like deliver groceries for like Instacart and stuff. I was like, I could get a city bike and go give give groceries, like just to make some <laughs> coins, girl. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, what's the girl to do? Point. I miss when like I because I used to strip on the internet. Like <laughs> I was like one of those cyber girls, and I'm like. Now it's, it's kind of coming back. Like I'm about to. Oh, I did that. I used to. I love. I made cute coin Me off the camp. Me too. I made so much cute money. I was living camp. for those times. That was <laughs> so fun. I'm like, that's coming and back. And it's now. safe. If you could do it at home, girl. Yeah, I know. Safe sex. I know. Hello. Hello. Put a backdrop. Yeah, it's perfect. Well, I noticed yeah. some. Um, a lot of museums have started doing these like virtual tours of their galleries. Yeah. Um, and I'm wondering how this is going to affect the art world like that's something I've, i'm solely not like that in tune with so i'm wondering how that yeah if, if the same thing's happening like you know how things are getting exposed and how's that affecting your work as an artist in that realm it's sort of i mean i feel i mean i had already sort of like planned a little bit more distance from the art world this year because i i I, to focus on music yeah. and so this is just kind of even amplified that even more where it's like I think the art world was already kind of spiraling in a lot of ways you know what I mean in terms yeah. of just the it's an economy run entirely by just like plutocrats who just decide that they deem someone worthy of investment Lord. you know exactly. and it's one of those industries that from the outside, like I know there's a lot of people like 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 younger people in art school that see me and they're like, oh, you're a, a successful artist. And I'm just like, in this, in, in institutionally, yes, in the sense that like I show in a lot of museums and stuff like that, but that doesn't translate to financial success in, right. the, in, in the art context, it, 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 it doesn't. And sometimes those things even, there's like a total disconnect where it's just like, you know, it's like if a, if, wealthy people decide that they don't want you in their, you know, Italian beachside villa home, you're out of a check, you right. know? And so like politics. I think this is, yeah. And so it's always, it's always a, a little bit absurd. Um, and I have functioned in it. So that's not to say that I like totally see myself as outside of it, but I think that the COVID has made all of that absurdity and precarity just, amplified to the point where I kind of feel I don't even know I just kind of feel outside of that for now you know because I have no financial like there's no I have no that won't it's not going to help me so you know both as a part of my own planning and even more now it's like people aren't really buying art and like I was in a I was in a fundraising auction I donated a piece to an auction um in New York, and I like this. I I was in New York, um, right? Like maybe a few weeks before COVID hit, I was in New York, and they had uh, it was to support my friend's organization, and you know people had like bid on the artwork, and then as COVID hit, literally people were just like, no one came through, and people just didn't even pay, and none of the collectors paid for the work. The oh fundraiser. shit! God. Yeah, and I was like, well, this is indicative of what's going to happen, you know. Right. And so, and art can kind of, like a lot of people, to, like a lot of art collectors, it's it's essentially, it's like real estate. It's like asset. It's like, it's like right. a kind of, you know, you're appraising these things as assets that will increase in value over a lifetime. And so right. that's, you know, and so that mega artists are fine. If you're already deemed kind of like your work will continue to grow, you're fine. But for young and like a lot of young contemporary artists, basically we're all just stuck in this weird kind of video game, rich people video game world where everyone is assessing like, oh, should I buy this thing now and see if I can get a discount because this person has a lot of write-ups and I think in 10 years it might pay off. So if I like buy this type of young artist, like this number of them over this period of time, generally in the long, long run, like a certain number of them are bound to be successful. So, and you know, so it's kind of like real estate. It really yeah. is like real estate, how the financial as the financial side of things work. And so, you know, and there's this kind of, there's the, there's the, this kind of fantasy, which is to say that it doesn't exist, but like it's the extreme minority of the like benevolent collector, you know, mm -hmm. who just like loves to see smart and, you know, artists who really care, but 
Their yeah, I just, are I just, it's so exhausting. <laughs> that that is so exhausting, and that's why that's why I've always liked music, and I've I've always appreciated having a counterbalance to right. my art. Basically, I've been able to make art because I like making art, and because I want to. I hope that people. I hope that what I'm saying is illuminating, or interesting, or funny, or gives something to someone, and. But now I don't have the there's I don't have those other safety nets, you know, because I had right. always been like, oh, I can make my money doing music and and public speaking and all this other stuff. And so, you know, if people want to buy my art, cool. If they don't, I'm making this because I want to make this. Because yeah, for me, no especially like visual art, it has to be real because it's not like music. Music, it's like people pay for tickets. You know what I mean? It's yeah. a much more like, you know. Um, crowdsourced kind of like populist way of generating an income. So I don't, I don't, it's not rich people. It's like if people fuck with my music, they fuck with it. They're willing to pay a door cover or a fee, you know? Yeah. They show up, they're there, they're loyal. Yeah. You have your fans. It's like, they're all, yeah. all over the place, like all over the spectrum yeah. of like culture and stuff like that too. And now that's, that's all like off now too, which is so strange. Yeah. It's really hard. It's just, I feel like it's just becoming this like, you know, for, that's why I, I personally I feel like I get paralyzed because I don't I don't know what the fuck is gonna happen. Like I just don't know. I just it comes to this point where you're like, I wanna do all this stuff, but I also feel like, you know, do, am I gonna have to change careers? Like you were talking about your sister. Like am I gonna like what happens now? Creatively, like life wise, eating and shit. Like, I don't <laughs> I don't eating. you know, like I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah, especially... I don't know what the fuck. I think especially in industries where sometimes we have already felt undervalued, you know, like, oh, a hundred percent. It's just like, okay, now what's the point? Like I was already feeling like they weren't respecting my art for what it, Thank you. I believe yeah. it's worth. And now it's like, right. there's not even not a point really to it. Yeah. It's yeah. definitely like whatever. Um, I saw you were doing a digital residency in London. Yeah. So the, the residency that was going to be our kind of like recording studio, mm-hmm. We've worked out, um, so we're, I'm doing a one month digital residency with them now. Um, awesome. Just because, yeah, so, you know, they wanted to find a way where I could still, where it could still happen in some form. And so we said, well, we'll do one month digital and maybe later on I could end up still going to London. Um, That's awesome. So, how does yeah. that work in the digital realm? Like, what is the, that like consist yeah. of? I mean, I think that's the question mark that all of this, the streaming stuff is operating right. on. I mean, so, so are I'm, you free to like, create? Are you free to create it? Some, yeah. I'm making some, you know, some music, like a kind of. I'm gonna do like a music stream thing that Gorgeous. that they all on their platforms they all um, stream next week. Um, but it's all it's all a negotiation, the digital, and I think it's 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 kind of ironic because I'm such a, you know, I think I'm such an internet baby and people see yeah. me as like, you're the tumble, you're the, you're online. But I'm also, I realize I'm very much so about, you know what I mean? Real, like I like to like play music to audiences and I like to be out in spaces and I like to speak and be, you know, and, and engage yeah. with the sense of a yeah. public or, you know, I really love all of that. And so it's been kind of difficult for me to, answer those questions for myself of like, okay, well, how do I translate this now in this digital streaming economy? Because like, like the streaming clubs don't do it for me. Don't right. I was going to ask you about that. Like what? Cause everyone's <laughs> doing these like DJing on live and these parties. And I'm like, this is so weird. Like I can't. It's not hitting. It's not hitting for me. It's really <laughs> yeah. not hitting. Um, I was joking with a friend earlier. I was like, I'm not going to my bathroom to do Coke. You know, this is weird. <laughs> Yeah. I'm like, what am I like, doing? Like, where are we going? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's that. Yeah. All right, well, I, I want to shift the conversation to something a little more personal, if you don't mind. So we're all, we've been talking a lot about how, like, relationships under quarantine, like, are functioning and, like, how, like, we function in our relationships to keep maintain them and keep them healthy under this pressure and I are you you're quarantined with your boo? I am. I am. And working out. So yeah. Well, we have we have different we have different apartments. Um, oh. Cute. So it's not like we're not in the same in the same apartment. 
Okay. Um, but awesome. we spend most of most of our time together, the overwhelming amount of our time together. Um, I would say it's kind of, so initially, because I travel all the time. Mm-hmm. And so I'm so used to being like, oh, I'm gone for the weekend. And so any relationship that I'm in usually has kind of built into it by default, a lot of just like space yeah, and time away from each other. And I've, I've not that I've like, like fetishized that necessarily or explicitly sought that out, but that's just kind of been the nature, the nature of things yeah, based on, style. you know, my work and, and all of that. And so it was interesting. And like when the quarantine first happened, you know, it was, I think it was like, like, Oh, well, like what's going, like, how is this going to affect everything? Right. Mm-hmm. And the beginning, the beginning of quarantine, I think was like, and like this way for a lot of people was really intense. Cause basically like, both of us, all of our plans, you know, all of our yeah. plans together and individually just kind of seemed to come to a sudden halt. Yeah. Um, and like we were gonna go, we were gonna go visit his like family. Like he had to visit, come and visit my family. We were gonna go visit his family. Oh, and wow. so, um, and like that trip didn't end up happening. And so in the beginning, it was really difficult just because it's like you on the one hand, like you have a lot to deal with on your own. Like I had so much and I didn't have a place to stay. So I had no sense of home. So I was already bugging. Shit, same. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It, it, like without factoring anyone else, I was already bugging. And so it was an, it was like, you know, kind of intense for, for a period of time where it's just like, okay, well, what do we do? Cause it's just like, everything suddenly becomes like a question mark and the space that you normally have to process now it's suddenly it's all generally like together you know and so right. it's a very it was a very sudden shift um oh my god but then it kind of ev- then it evolved and it it kind of became i think it's sort of like like i was talking to my sister the other day and she was like i feel like corona is one of these like era defining things where it's just like it's just like will it be able, like, what will Corona say? In the same way that it reveals underlying things about society, it also reveals underlying things about ourselves and our relationships. And it ended up being, like, it ended up being so, evolving into something so cute. Where now it's like, I, you know, I was like, there was a while where I was just like, okay, well, this is, um, like, what's going to happen? <laughs> I know. You know. God, I had the same edgy. as when it dropped. I was like, what edgy, do I do you know? <laughs> And it ended up just, like, totally blossoming into something. Like, it's almost like an evolution where it's like, oh, wow, I really, if I fucks with you. <laughs> Under pandemic times. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> you, now you, I'm you're gonna, a like, keeper. I'm, 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 I'm like, totally neurotic all over the place you know what I mean like if like I can fuck with you and you can fuck with me in like the world is crazy we're crazy everything is imploding fucking bonkers yeah we really, you know and it, and it and it, it ended up being that you know in one form or another obviously we're still in it you know that's not to make some final pro- proclamation but yeah it's it's ended up being because now it's like it's an opportunity to just like spend time with someone. Also, like once you get past the initial freak out, it's like, you know, yes, we're all stressed about money universally. You know what I mean? So there's right. no reason for me to isolate my own financial precarity and bug out over that. Like that's one way of processing. And if I choose, if I was to do that, I would still just be in permanent panic. But it's if, if you can like get yourself to the point of seeing past that it's also an opportunity just to spend time with someone in a basically you know a a, a sort of new open arena it's very like tabular like with time and sociality and how you relate to a city you know what I mean there's no social spaces there's no clubs and so it's become a very interesting and really beautiful way to further get to know you know someone I'm really in love with that's so interesting because I feel like it also brings up like you know because some partners are still have their jobs some like are like artists like right. us who their work right. just disappeared and it's so to, it also brings up these like class issues and all these like underlying kind of like you know 
all the stuff that you don't really yeah, talk about, but it's there, you know? I'm really thankful that, because I've, I've, I've had to deal with that before, but I'm really thankful that I don't, that there's no, like, you know, I'm in that precarity. If you're t- you know, it's, it's, I feel like we've, it's, we've really been able to help each other in That's a lot awesome. of ways. And there were times where, cause I've been, there have been several times I've really gone through it, you know? Yeah. You know, I even had, you know, where it's, 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 you know, there's been a lot of trials that I've, that I've gone through and it's been so nice to see, you know, my boo really like be there, yeah. you know, awesome. and That's see awesome. this as an opportunity to expand instead of as, a panic over what it's not like, you know. So same. That's nice. You see each other in different lights, and you love each other more after all this crazy shit. Yeah, it's a keeper. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. literally at that's first. Like a fitness test or something. I don't know, but it. Oh it's, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a major test. Shit. Yeah, one hundred. I like yeah. it's when this first hit. Like you said, I totally panicked too, and we were both like, I was like. This is over. I can't be like we're we're done. <laughs> yeah. Like I don't know what this relationship yeah. is. Like what does it even mean to be together? Like if we're not gonna be together during this, I don't know. We're, like just like we're done. And then uh, we were like, yeah. wait, we're just freaking out. This is a bad time to make decisions. Let's yeah. just <laughs> see how this goes. And yeah, let's not make any sudden yeah any sudden anything. decisions. But yeah, just like you said, it also evolved yeah. into this thing where I'm like, oh my god, how can I love you even yeah. more? Like I see how you are so supportive in this time and. With all the uh-huh. other stuff stripped away, you know, because it's always this dynamic with like friends and family and like our jobs, and now it's all gone, and we just see each other for like who we are without all this shit around us. Um, yeah. I wanted to ask you a question. We always ask the dolls this question because we had this one episode mm-hmm. about disclosure, where it's like mm-hmm. you know when you're when you're dating, like how do you disclose your like identity to like people that you meet maybe in a club or in a party or like even online or whatever? Like, how have you dealt with like spilling your tea to like? Mm-hmm. I would in say general? so. Sometimes I'm sometimes I'm you know if you're in a social context in which you it's you know you're with friends or, you know, it's like a more intimate social setting. It, that, that's kind of nice because, like, I don't really have to say it because everyone already knows that. It's just, like, whatever. You know right. what I mean? And it's everyone like a safe knows, space. knows that about me. Yeah, and so, and I'm, and th- so those circumstances are cute because you just don't really have to stress over it. And I'm in those kind of situations a lot. And I think I do, I think I also benefit like, there's a lot of downsides to people being, like, in, you know, being, like, public and the social media right. and whatever, like, that can be annoying in a lot of ways. But in other ways, it's not, there's a lot that I don't have to say that people just kind of know. Right, you're, like, Google it. Because <laughs> I'm very public, you know what I mean? And I yeah. and it's not like I'm hiding that at all. And so I think I've benefited from that in a lot of ways. Um, but anytime I've been in situations where that's not the case, I always just... I'm very open, like I'm very, it's not like off the bat when someone starts talking to me or something, you know, it's usually like, if there's, if like intimacy or something then becomes a question, you know, I am, I have no problem, I always just say that, you know, I always just tell people, you know, and I have my little ways of saying it, whatever, but it's, 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 So you get to it right away. that much of an issue. Good. Wow. You, you like get to it right away. You know, some girls they like yeah, they like, hesitate. Like, just, I don't like dealing with like 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 I'm the type of person where you know, not that I don't have things that I won't say or secrets or things like that, but it's like I'm the type of person where it's like if something needs to be said, it will eat at it will just eat away at me until I yeah. just like blah. like I yeah, have to. Yeah, it's not unhealthy for you. Out. You know, right. it will come out. And so it's just cuter for me to be. And I also like to me, it's like treating it as something that I need to like save or avoid or whatever would would also be to say that like I'm and my like 
and like my beauty and power and sex appeal is something that I need to like weirdly like be timid and like not say and so right. for me it's just like I'm just gonna come out with it it's just like that's I'm perfect. not stressed. I know I'm cute so it's like yeah. you're best. That's right, yeah. yeah that's so true I, I feel so, like you know, it's a personal problem yeah yeah, yeah. like the way you yeah. handle that yeah. I think says more about you yourself than it does yeah. about like the outward experience of it all. That's so exactly. true. Yeah. I remember I, I have gotten into some times though where like, cause like you, I'm like, oh my God, you know, I'm public. I speak about it all the time. Like everyone knows. And I assume some guys know. And then I like get in, then I like get into this whole shit and they're like, had no clue. And I'm like, oh fuck, I thought you were like friends with my friend and they all like all yeah. knew. And in those moments I'm like, oh fuck. And it's like a little. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's happened with me. Cause that's happened with, I, well, I find like, I don't feel that responsibility sometimes when it's like, like I've had like when when someone is like really aggressively pursuing me, yeah, and it's like I'm not given times. It's like I'm just going out just to have a good time. It's like you're in my grill, like right. you know what I mean. It's like not my... I don't yeah. have the responsibility to like, like I'm not beholden to revealing anything to you. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I'm just here. Like you're kind of. And so in those situations, I don't feel, you know, I'm like, whatever, I don't care. Got it. All right. Yeah. Well, we're towards the end of our show. We have some rapid fire questions. Are you ready? Wrap it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Girl. I know that costs extra. Why would I put on this lip? Because it costs extra. It's NARS. For Christ's sakes. No means to interrupt. But here's what you're going to do. You're going to join Patreon. You're going to start following Allegedly at patreon.com backslash Allegedly NYC. And you're going to click on our tier called like, That Cost Extra. And we're going to have scandalous questions. Things that just make us us. Buy me coffee. Buy me lipstick. Like we need lighting. With that being said, back to our episode. All right, Juliana. Well, how can people find you if they want to stalk you? Yes. Let's I'm... Do Juliana Huxtable and everything except for Twitter where I'm Huxtable Juliana. Genius. All right. So send her <laughs> your love letters there. And girl, be safe. Let's stay Just in touch. We love you here at Allegedly. And Thank you for world. having me. This was so cute. Thank yeah, this was so, so cute. Thank you, you for amazing. having time. We'll Thank you. have you on again. Okay, boo. Signing off. Bye, everyone. Bye, See you bye next guys. Time. Bye, everyone. Allegedly, <laughs> NYC. Hello.